sentences can be really, really complicated and talks of PSR, FFP, financial breaches, amortization, pure profit can all be a bit much for us fans who didn't take a finance degree. So, I'm going to, in one video, make it super, super simple for you to understand how football clubs work in terms of transfers and how certain recent deals this summer window, such as Ian Motson to Chelsea, Douglas Luiz to Juventus, are deals to balance the books of clubs and how that's all possible. So sit back, relax, and here is the finances of football transfers explained. Right, so every year a club will publish free accounts to the public and to the Premier League, the most important one being the profit and loss statement, which is the one we will look at today. It basically just shows how much profit or how much loss the club has made. For revenue that can be included on this statement is commercial revenue, so money from selling tickets and merchandise, TV money, prize money from competitions, and most importantly, player sales. As for the costs on this statement, they include the big one, which is player wages, player transfer fees, interest payments and stadium costs. When it comes to the Premier League, all of those incomes and costs I mentioned must be no more than a 105 million loss over three years to comply with PSR rules. So that's what the PSR, when people talk about PSR and making the loss of those other stuff which they are talking about. PSR is concerned with only money you make from selling tickets and merchandise, your TV money, your prize money, and your player sales, and then the money coming out regarding PSR, but only things they care about are player wages, transfer fees, stadium costs, and interest payments. So that's the basic premise to begin with. However, when it comes to how player transfers and sales are accounted for on this profit and loss sheet, this is where it gets more interesting and how clubs find loopholes in the system. Now, as you are probably aware, Premier League clubs have pretty expensive taste. Let's start off with transfer fees. The top flight almost spent almost 2.4 summer window at an average of 120 million per club. That in itself would potentially blow their three year profit and loss sheet apart in one go. But those sums don't go into the accounts all at once. Using a process called amortization, clubs are able to treat players as assets in a financial sense rather than one big outgoing, even if they do pay the whole cost up front. Amortization, in a financial term, essentially means spreading the cost of a football player and their transfer fee over the course of their contract. So if you sign a 50 million pound player on a five year contract, they are worth 50 million at the start of your accounts, right? By the end of those five years though, they will leave on a free transfer, meaning they're worth nothing, of course, if you don't give them a new deal. So at the end of your accounts, after five years, they're worth zero pounds. In accounting terms, that can be put down as you making a 10 million pound loss every year. So, that means, on your accounts, when you buy this 50 million pound player, you only put on your accounts a 10 million loss each year, not a 50 million pound fee the year you buy him. So transfers are actually calculated based upon the length of contract, in terms of finance 
emphasis on accounts rather than how much the club spends up front. That's exactly why we have seen Chelsea and other clubs signing players on contracts as long as eight years, and why Premier League clubs voted to limit spreading those transfer fees over a maximum of five years from now on. So, when you see a player signed for a big fee, essentially, you want to look at their contract length and divide the transfer fee by the contract length, and you will get the real transfer fee that will be on the accounts of that club. So, that explains why Chelsea, as I mentioned, and other clubs have been able to splash out a load of cash, when you might think, how are they complying with BSR rules? Well, it's because if they spend 100 million on, on a player, 100 million doesn't actually go on their profit and loss statement in that year. It'll be divided up each year. Right, that's how a player's transfer fee is put on the books. But what about when they're sold? This is where the idea of pure profit, a word you might have heard get banded around a bit recently, comes into the fold. So, as we mentioned, when a team buys a player, the fee is amortised over the years of their contract. However, when the club wants to sell the player, this is where things can get a bit more interesting. Let's go back to our previous example. A club buys a player for £50 million on a five-year contract. As we established on the books, each year this costs them for five years £10 million a year. But let's say in year three of this deal, they decide to sell the player for £30 million. On the accounts, just like when they bought the player, it doesn't just show a £30 million income, it shows the book value of the player. The book value is essentially the difference between the player's initial cost and how much you have amortised already. So remember, we bought him for £50 million at £10 million a year. So by year three, we've already accounted and paid £30 million of his transfer fee in terms of on the books, right? Because £10 million a year and we're in year three, so that's £30 million. That means, if after three years we sell our £50 million player using a book value, as I said, it's the initial transfer fee, minus how much we've amortised already, the initial fee was £50 million. we've amortised over three years £30 million. £50 million minus £30 million means he will have a book value after year three of £20 million. So, that means any sale over 20 million is considered, within accounting terms, as profit. Therefore, even though the club bought the player for 50 million and sold him for 30 million, technically, when it comes to accounting and finances, on the books it says they have made a profit of 10 million on the player, because its book value was lower than the transfer fee they sold him for. Now this is where pure profit is involved. Because let's say we only sold him for 10 million, we would make a loss of 10 million on the player in the accounts, right? However, when it comes to academy players, their book value, well, it's zero. Remember, our formula for book value is the transfer fee minus the amortised fees we've paid so far. But we're an academy player, the club didn't pay a transfer fee for the player, and therefore there's no transfer fee and there's no amortised fee either. So book value is zero. That means the club can sell this academy player for one pound and on the books that's viewed as a profit. This is why many clubs have been 
selling Academy talents recently, such as Chelsea, with Ian Monster and Lewis Hall, Mason Mount, Loftus Cheek, and many others. Aston Villa last summer sold Aaron Ramsey, Jaden Philogene, and Cameron Archer. Evidence sold Tom Gannon, Anthony Gordon, Ellis Sims. It's a sad and somewhat perverse reality that this is what makes sales of Academy graduates so appealing under B BSR rules. A financial system that is meant to be about sustainability actively encourages business of this kind. But anyways, as you can see, it makes it very appealing for clubs to sell Academy players as they can register their fees as pure profit on the books because those Academy players have no book value. So, with all this said, it's time to apply both of these theories we've explained into practice and help explain some recent deals that took place. So Ian Martin was sold by Chelsea to Aston Villa this summer for a fee of 37 million. Amari Kellyman was sold by Aston Villa to Chelsea for 19 million. These transfers actually banked Chelsea a profit of roughly 34 million and Aston Villa a profit of around 13 million. How, you might be asking? Well, let's apply what we've just learned. So as we discussed earlier, transfer fees are amortised over the years of the contract. So we will start with Ian Martin and we will divide his transfer fee by the length of his contract at Aston Villa to find out how much Villa are paying for him each year. So he costs 37 million and is on a six year deal, meaning 37 divided by six is roughly about six million pounds per year. So Martin, for the next six years, will cost Villa six million each year. And on the books right now, this year, he has cost them six million. So that's his transfer fee to Aston Villa. Amari Kellerman is a Villa Academy product and was sold for 19 million, as we discussed. He has no book value because they didn't pay a transfer fee for him. They don't have to amortize anything. So all of the transfer fee is pure profit. And that goes straight onto the books for Villa this season. So that's 19 million in income on the profit and loss statement. So that means this season on their accounts, they have an income of 19 million from the sale of Amari Kellyman through pure profit and a cost of 6 million due to the amortization of Ian Martin. And that means Villa have made a profit of 13 million on their books from this deal. As for Chelsea, let's use the same principles the other way around. So Chelsea signed Kellyman for 19 million on a six year deal. Again, transfer fees are amortized by their length of contract. So we divide 19 million by six, and that will give us roughly three million pounds per year. So that's the actual cost on the books for Kellyman for Chelsea. Ian Martin is an academy product, so counts as pure profit. Again, for having no transfer fee and his book value being zero. So when they sell him for 37 million, that goes straight onto their books for this year. Meanwhile, on their books this year, in terms of outgoings, it's the amortised value of three million pound of Amari Kellyman. This means they have made a profit of 34 million from this deal. So, hopefully, that made sense. Those two deals and you followed very clearly there and there you go that is the art of I guess legal money laundering by those two clubs 
and now both of those and also others such as Everton and Newcastle and others have made dodgy deals to comply with PSR as both clubs were having problems with it and they have sold their problems by registering profit from these two deals. I hope that explains it for you and the, here are the key takeaways from this video. But if you didn't understand any of it, then just understand these key points. Transfer fees are not the actual cost of the player to the club in terms of accounting. If you want to find out the real cost in terms of on the books of the club this year, how much they're paying for the player, you must divide their transfer fee by their contract length and that will tell you how much in terms of accounting and PSR the player really costs. Transfer sales for players are also not the actual sale of a player. If the club has bought the player, the longer the player is at the club, the more time they can amortise the fee. And this means they can register a profit for the player when they sell them. This is why clubs rarely sell players a year or two after buying them, even if they're awful. Most likely they'll give them a loan so they can keep amortising the fee and increase, or sorry, decrease the book value. If a club sells a player for higher than their book value, then the transfer, the sale, is considered a profit on the books. Remember, book value is the initial transfer fee paid minus how much they have amortized of that fee so far. Finally, sales of academy players are registered as pure profit because there was no transfer fee for them and no amortization needed, so their book value is zero. And this is the best way for a club to generate income from a player's sale as any transfer fee received for this player will be 100% on the books. So there you have it, that's the crazy world of football finances. I've only explained a little bit of it as well, there's plenty more I could go into but maybe I'll save that for another day. If you want to see me make a part two of this explaining how the actual process of transfers works such as agent fees, image rights, sell on fees, buyback clauses, how much how does that work, release clauses, stuff like that, let me know, I can make that happen, but hopefully you did find this video informative and it has given you a bit, a bit of clarity in terms of all this football jargon, in terms of finances, and if it hasn't, and you're still are clueless, don't worry, because I, I hope I found it you found it relaxing.